Hello, wonderful family. Another glorious day, another beautiful opportunity to share his word with you. I never tire of sharing this word because his word is a lifter all the time. No matter where you are in life, once that word comes, it elevates, it picks you up from wherever you are. Today, I want us to actually uh, delve into scripture. Um, and I'll be talking about two, two particular scriptures, uh, one in the book of Mark chapter 5 and one in the book of uh, John chapter 11. And uh, it has to do with time. Time. And, um, okay, we'll also look at John chapter 2. I will, I will talk about that in passing. Now, uh, come with me, let's go to Mark chapter 5 from verse 21. And when Jesus had recrossed in the boat to the other side, a great throng gathered about him, and he was at the lake shore. Then one of the rulers of the synagogue came up, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he prostrated himself at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be healed and live. So he was telling, he came actually to tell him that, look, this child, uh, her life, the, basically what I require from you is time constraint. Time is of the essence. If you don't come on time, my daughter will die. But if you get there on time, she will leave and she will not die. And Jesus went with him and a great crowd kept following him and pressed him from all sides so as almost to suffocate him. So situations and circumstances mitigated Jesus going, quote-unquote, on time. And there was a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years and who had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better but grew worse, but instead grew worse. She had heard the reports concerning Jesus and she came up behind him in the throng and touched his garment. For she kept saying, if I only touch his garments, I shall be restored to health. And immediately her flow of blood was dried up at the source. And suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed of her distressing ailment. And Jesus, recognizing in himself that the power proceeding from him had gone forth, turned around immediately in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples kept saying to him, You see the crowd pressing hard around you from all sides, and you asked, Who touched me? Still she kept looking around to see her who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had been done for her, though alarmed and frightened and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith, your trust and confidence in me springing from faith in God has restored you to health. Go, into, go in into peace and be continually healed and freed from your distressing bodily disease. Hallelujah. You see, all this happening was eaten into that time. Remember, Jairus' need was time-constrained. Come quick so that you can lay your hands on my daughter to heal her so that she will live, in essence, so that she will not die. If you don't come on time, she will die. Please come on time. Time is not on my side. Come. And there were two main obstacles. First of all, the crowd. And then this woman with the issue of blood. And Jesus did not turn away the crowd, neither did he turn away the woman with the issue of blood. Hallelujah. Now in verse 13. Sorry, verse 35. While he was still speaking, there came some from the ruler's house who said to Jairus, Your daughter has died. Why bother and distress the teacher any further? So the aim of the enemy who was walking in the time zone was to make sure time passed and for that thing which Jairus did was trying to prevent from happening to happen. In essence, run down the clock so that it looks as if everything is too late. You get what I'm saying? Have you been in that kind of a situation where time seems to have run out? Oh, if only God had come true for me before now. Only if he could have come before now. I know he can do all things. So if, if he came before now, this would have been like this. Or this wouldn't have been like this. This was the same place that Jairus found himself. While he was still speaking, there came some... Overhearing but ignoring what they said. Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep on believing. In essence, he was telling him that I don't walk based on time. I am never late. Don't listen to what has been told you. Overhear and ignore. Don't pay attention to time. To that mitigating factor called time. I operate outside the realms of time. 
there's no situation or circumstance that would say that I came too late. I am never late. I set time in motion in this world. I don't, I am not subject to time. I created time. I walk outside of time. It says, do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep on believing. And he permitted no one to accompany him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the ruler of the synagogue, he looked carefully with understanding at the tumult and the people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had gone in, he said to them, Why do you make an uproar and weep? The little girl is not dead, but is sleeping. He was saying again, I don't walk based on time. What you are seeing in this physical realm, yes, uh, it is so in your eyes. But as far as I'm concerned, I've come here. I am never late. And this child, as far as I'm concerned, is not dead. She's sleeping. And they laughed and jeered at him. But he put them all out. And taking the child's father and mother and those who were with him, he went in where the little girl was lying. Gripping her firmly by the hand, he said to her, Talita Kumai, we translated this, little girl, I said to you, arise from the sleep of death. And instantly the girl got up and started walking around, for she was 12 years old, and they were utterly astonished and overcome with amazement. And he strictly commanded and warned them that no one should know this, and he expressly told them to give her something to eat. Hallelujah. You see, in this situation, everything conspired to see to it that Jesus was late. And so to speak, in the physical realm, Jesus was late. But as far as Jesus was concerned, that wasn't lateness. He reversed the clock of the hands of time. That thing that was time constrained, he showed that he could act even when it seemed as if the clock, clock had run out. Say, don't bother yourself about it. Don't fear. I am able. I'm the God of all flesh. I control time. And even if time has run out, I can reverse the hands of time. I can reverse that thing that, is, that seems to be time constrained. Don't panic. I take you into John chapter 11. The same thing happened with uh, Lazarus. They sent for Jesus quickly. Say, come quickly. The one that you love is sick, near unto death. Come and lay your hands on him. And Jesus started there three extra days. He's, that is, he stayed there three extra days. In fact, by the time the runner had gone, come to tell Jesus of Lazarus' condition, in all likelihood, Lazarus had died. But Jesus said, Lazarus is not dead, he's sleeping. I'm going to ra ra raise him from the dead. Oh, from, sorry, I'm going to raise him from, rouse him from sleep. He got down to Bethany. And everybody was fretting oh if you had come on if you had come earlier than now if you had come before now you i know you can do all things don't we all say that oh lord i know you can do this if only you had come before this is it's too late now if you had come if you had come through if only you had sent this money before now if only you had sent this person before now if only you had done this before now this wouldn't have happened we would have been oh it is too late it's, did jesus countenance that he said i am the resurrection that thing that seems to have died, I will raise it up. I am the resurrection. I'm in charge. Don't bother yourself with time. Time is of no consequence as far as I'm concerned. I am the one who has created and I will do it. Remember, John chapter 2, was it, or is it chapter 3, with the issue of um, uh, the marriage in Cana. When uh, Mother Mary came to Jesus, Say they went, they've run out of wine. And he said, what have I to do with the woman? My time is not yet come. So that time was, something was, he was time constrained. But, even though his time had not come, as far as Mary had made place the demand of faith, time had to stand still. He respected the, the, the pool of faith. Or sorry, sorry, the pool of faith. And turned water into wine, even though his time to perform miracles had not yet come. There is nothing like it is too late, or time has run out, or it is out of time. Your faith will pull it through. Your faith in God will pull it through. Don't give up. Don't shake. Don't fear. God bless you. Hallelujah.